Hello and welcome back to the channel. Last episode we talked about sound check basics and setting the gain on the Behringer X32. This episode we'll do that for the XR18. I already covered this a bit in a section of my 5 mistakes Behringer users make video which I made for both the X32 and the XR18. If you didn't see those I will link them in the text description below and I will put a link at the end of this video. Whenever you begin a sound check or a line check one of the most important controls is the gain control. That should typically be the first adjustment that you make. You want to have someone sing or play and you want to set the gain control for about minus 18 dB FS on your input meter. If you're coming to this from an analog console you might be thinking you should be setting this for 0 dB but that would be wrong. We're talking about two entirely different scales. The X32 meters are dBFS, that is dB full scale. That's an important distinction on these digital consoles. Now there is some margin of error, so you don't have to be perfectly set at minus 18 dBFS, but it should be close. You want to adjust the gain properly to leave yourself headroom on the channel, and just as importantly, to give yourself a consistent input level from channel to channel. If you consistently adjust your inputs to be around minus 18 dBFS on your input meters, then all the controls that follow on each channel underneath that gain control will intuitively follow a consistent pattern as well. Ideally, at soundcheck, the musicians will give you performance levels so that you're setting your gain based on show levels. Make sure to ask the drummer to really hit his or her drums and not just tap on them. Normally you're going to find experienced musicians will already know this routine and will give you performance levels and they will give you some voice projection when they test their mics. If you do notice that you're being sandbagged you can adjust the gain a little more conservatively. This is something that experience will help you recognize. Like I said earlier there is a margin of error here so you do not have to be 100% perfect. In a perfect world you'll want your gain to be set at sound check and left alone after that. Unless the channel is clipping or severely threatening to clip, it's better just to leave the gain control alone once the show has started. The problem here is, if you change the gain settings after sound check, you're changing the levels of everything on the channel strip that follows the gain control. That means you're changing the house levels of that channel, you're also changing the levels you send to the FX, you're also changing the level hitting the threshold of your comps and gates, and then the biggie. If you're doing monitors from this same console, you're changing the monitor levels. Let's take a look at this visual that gives you some idea of a basic signal flow. You can see your input hits the board, hits the gain control, and then in some order hits your comps, gates, and your sends. And then also your house mix. That's why it's important to get your meters in the window of minus 18 dB FS at sound check so you can leave it during the show. If you have to be more aggressive with your faders to compensate because you got sandbagged or someone is quieter than you sound checked them, then that's okay. You still use your faders to adjust your mix. You want to avoid adjusting the gain after sound check if you can help it. Here is an example of what happens if you adjust the gain on a vocal channel during the show. On the screen we can see our monitor output meters showing us outputs 1 through 4. That would be monitor mixes 1 through 4. If I start changing the gain on the channel as the singer is singing, you can see how much it starts impacting the outputs going to the monitors. That is not just a meter change that you see. That is the level of the vocals in the monitors changing that much. A little change on the gain control can make a big difference in the output of the monitors. Also, if your monitor was already close to feedback and you turn the gain up, then you might exceed the feedback point and cause feedback in the monitor when you weren't even trying to turn the monitor up anyway. And that's not because the gain knob itself causes feedback. Feedback doesn't care where the level comes from. For example, if you're 3 dB from feedback in a monitor, at any point you turn that signal going to the monitor up by 3 dB, it will cause feedback. Feedback doesn't care where the level comes from. So with the gain knob being the first place your signal hits, it's important to understand not only its effect on the channel level, but its place in the signal flow. And it's basically number one in that regard. It's how you get your sound check off on the right foot. All right, I hope you found this info helpful. Please like and subscribe. If you have a suggestion for future content, please write it down below. And I will see you next time.